going on, everybody? What's going on? It's Josh Wilson, and this is the Big Dog Podcast in the studio with Jonathan Mack. What's going on, Jonathan? Nothing much. It's a beautiful day here in Yorktown, Virginia. Man, it is freaking nice. The weather has been incredible. We went out to on on Sunday, uh, the four of us, to play golf. And it's the first time as a family we've ever gone and played. Logan has taken Kiki a couple times with his friends to play. Uh, he's taken his mom to the driving range a couple times. Um, Logan and I play often, but this is the first time as a unit we went out to play. Devin's first time ever legitimately playing golf on the course. Okay. Whew. We we did not represent as a unit well. <laughs> we we really did not. It was Logan and Devin against Kiki and I. All right. And um I wouldn't say I played well at all. I would I would not say Kirsten is naturally gifted at the sport of golf. Hey, volleyball is where she shines. Uh huh. Devin's left handed, so that tells you all you need to know about that. Hey, I'm left handed. She's left handed out there, right handed putting, and she was a beast. Like Logan was lining her up, right? And he's like, he's like, hold on. And he walks up and he would turn the putter, just adjust the putter a little bit. He's like, swing. She goes, this doesn't look right. He's like, just swing. She's nailing birdie putts for them par putts like clutch and I, I was like why do you even have an opinion right here Devin like j- if the boy's telling you the dude who plays every day like just follow his lead I said maybe your problem in your life and the reason you've been so uncoordinated <laughs> is because you've been going through life left-handed for 40 some odd years because you're putting right-handed and you are money you are money so anyway um we we did not represent well I actually caught a root or something on one swing and my shoulder, my right shoulder had been messing with me last week. Wasn't feeling real great. And I swung, oh no, I think I had a nine iron. I swung and I caught like this root. I, it was not a great swing. Man, I thought, I just heard crunch, crunch, crunch in my shoulder. It hurts so bad. So it, it, Devin's like, well, just don't play anymore. It's fine. Man, come on. We're going to play. And so yeah. we, we get down to the last hole and Logan said, hey, look, clearly, you know, we have destroyed you and Kiki, clearly. Let's just make it about this hole. Whoever wins this hole wins the day. I'm like, bet. So I get up there because I'm a closer. I get up there, get my mind right. I hit this beautiful tee shot, and Logan just starts laughing. He's like, of course. Here we go. Here we go. Logan hits his shot. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. But I'm very confident that, Mine was better. Mine was better positioned. He outdrove me by about 15 yards, though. So that was that. Second shot, train wreck. We're, Kiki and I are in the woods. It just, We lost. We lost. It wasn't great. Um, they won. It was fine. But we did have a good time. But that weather that you're talking about, like it was beautiful in the morning. Super sunny. We get out to the course. Man, clouds come in. It's windy as can be. We're out there freezing. It sucked. So, but the other days have been nice. So that has me um, thinking about, it's funny you ask that or make that statement about the weather because I was thinking about consistency and it's something we talk about here from time to time. But we've had a funny thing happen over the last couple of months. And um, as I'm talking to associates about it and, and, and friends and stuff, a couple of these dummies, and we talk about this also, you know, they're like, like, man, you're lucky. I can't believe they're reaching out to you. I wish somebody would do that for us. I'm like, I come back to him like, well, why would somebody consider doing that for you? Why would they? Like, what what have you shown that they would want to reach out to you and have that conversation? And this is other people in the training space, right, who have, have their own training businesses and stuff. Like, man, I just wish somebody would would do that. That would give us a great, uh, a, a great um, head start or that would put us in a really great position. I'm like, Joker, this is going on nine years of work and a couple of these opportunities have just now presented themselves. Amen. Right. Nine years of work and these things are presenting themselves. I did not only did I not deserve to be presented with some of these opportunities years ago, we weren't ready for some of these opportunities years ago. And so, you know, you, you have to guys, you know, I want to reiterate from previous episodes, Focus on on who you're doing and who you do and what you're about and the task at hand. 
And if you do that consistently and you do it exceptionally well consistently, the universe will reward you. God's going to come into play. There's going to be favor upon relationships and introductions and opportunities in your life. And then you've got to be wise enough to decipher what is good for you and what is not. Because every opportunity is not necessarily an opportunity you should take, right? Um, and so you do. You have to audit those things, vet those things, put them through the process like we talked about a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about decision-making and the decision hack, right? Tough decisions. We, we take through the filter of our core values to find out if it's a good decision or not. You do the same thing with opportunities. If I take advantage of this opportunity, is the next steps and the foreseeable future in alignment with our values and what we're about? Does it allow us to build upon our values and what we're about? Does it allow us to help more people uh, further establish the brand, impact lives positively for both dogs and their families and our team and our staff and our trainers? Does it do all those things? And if it falls into that, hey, that may be a great opportunity. If it's a cool opportunity because of some exposure, but it puts you in alignment with people that aren't necessarily also on board with your values, that's going to be a problem for you. Oh, yeah. And I mean, just an example in my daily life, it happens with me all the time in music. It happened this past weekend. I had somebody reach out to me and say, hey, you know, I saw you got on Lyrical Lemonade. And for those who don't know, it's one of the bigger hip hop publications. Um, They run a festival. They're based out of Chicago. Um, my most recent song got put on there and somebody reached out and was like, Oh, I see that. I see that you're on lyrical lemonade. Well, I, I kind of want to start making music when I start. Do you think you could get me in touch with them? And it's like, I've been making music for six years. Right. I have several projects. I have spent equivalent, probably at least one year of what I spent on college tuition on yeah. making music. And that's just me. Yeah. I don't pay back student loans cause I put money into the music. Right. And to have somebody ask me, do you think you could just do that for me when I start? It's like there are no shortcuts. There are no easy ways up. And the really the only thing is consistency. Yep, consistency and consistently doing doing the work. And, you know, it's funny what that consistency will create. And, you know, so for us, we were contacted. I've got multiple locations right now, you know, within our, our training brand, Off Leash Canine Training, where we're working with – incredible organizations in those localities, um, great established businesses that are in alignment with, with our values when it comes to dogs and treatment of dogs and, and clients and community and, and investment and generosity and the service and the experience and who have reached out to us because of things they've seen about us through social media, through our, our YouTube channel and, millions of views and thousands and thousands of videos that show consistent experiences for our clients. Uh, when they see the re- thousands of reviews from clients and they consistently roll in daily, you know, with, with very similar uh, tone and messages behind them, they're reaching out to us because they've been doing their homework. They've been looking for someone to partner with. And so through doing their homework and their research, they're like, Josh, there's nobody like y'all here that create the type of experience that we're looking to, you know, and and they're like, we get people coming to us all the time and they're like, Hey, I want to come in here and train, or I want to do this for you or do that for you. And I appreciate that. And then one of the comments, one of the gentlemen made to me the other day when we were on the call, finalizing some stuff, he said, I really appreciate the hustle, you know, that they're out here doing that, but they're in here asking me to do things for them where they have no track record of ever doing anything for themselves. Exactly. Right. And so I don't ask for anything beyond how can we help? Like for eight, nine years now, when we're going out into the community and we're meeting with, you know, whether it's animal shelters, rescues, whether it is um, boarding daycares, veterinary clinics, groomers, things like that. I've never asked anybody for anything. So I don't need anything from anybody. Right. What I've asked is how can we help? How can we add value to you? Is there a disconnect in your business that we can assist with, right? It's not, hey, look, if anybody asks you for training, have them call me. Here's my card. That's some, (laughs) that's some lazy stuff, right? Yeah. And, And who, 
I mean, I get it. And everybody knows what I'm talking about because that's what everybody across all industries do. You know, realtors rolling into mortgage offices or mortgage, you know, people rolling into realtors offices, you know, or going to, you know, socials and stuff. And it's like, yeah, here's my car. Call, I can take care of your people. Call, have them call me. I take care of you. Who? How? How? Like add value. People skip that piece. And a part of consistency is what value do you add? And if you add enough value to a client's experience, they're probably going to tell people about you. Yeah. You know? And I think another important part of that is that this all ultimately falls back, at least the consistency piece falls back into our core values that we speak about so often, because I truly believe that discipline can't exist without consistency and consistency doesn't begin until you find some sense of discipline. 100%. You know? Yeah, you're right. And, you know, the discipline to just do the work day in and day out. There, there's no, it's not rocket science. I mean, I say this all the time with the, with the dog training, like that I could teach any good human being how to do what we do. If they're coachable, if they have great character, if they're disciplined to, to do the work, if they're the type of person that does the right things, whether someone's watching or not, I can teach that individual regardless of their previous knowledge with animals fairly quickly how to be a pretty good dog trainer and over time develop them into a great dog trainer, but it's going to take discipline and that consistency piece. And so when, you know, we start getting reached out to by people, it's just another, for me, a validation of, Hey, you know, we're, we're doing the work the right way. And, if you're listening, you notice I say we, I don't say I, I'm doing the work the right way. We are doing the work the right way. We as a team, as a unit, the team is doing just an incredible job and they're very consistent and they're very disciplined overall with the experience that we create for clients. And that gets talked about and that gets seen and, you know, and people notice those things, you know, we've been invited you know, to a couple things scheduling wise just hasn't worked out, but I don't even know if I've mentioned this to you because if it's something that's not going to work out, I haven't wanted to get you excited about it. But a couple of things people have invited us. They want to bring us the podcast on site and do interviews during, you know, some of these events and summits and things like that. Schedule wise for me, it just hasn't worked out yet, but eventually one is, and we're going to do that. And I love that. I mean, we're a new podcast. We're coming up on a year old, but they, they see the consistency in which we do the shows. We talked about this early on. What was it? Um, most podcasts don't get beyond four episodes. Yep. It was like nine. I mean, I don't <clears throat> hate throwing out wrong things, but I think it's literally a huge percentage of podcasts don't go beyond a fourth show. Yet we're in 50 some odd episodes. Um, and every week since we launched, you know, bringing you guys content sometimes better than others. Sorry. Uh, you know, but we're, again, our goal with the podcast is to help one person. If one person takes something away from it, you know, we feel really good about it. what you find. So from PacificContent.com, I'm seeing that based on a sample of 10 million episodes, most podcasts do not get past five episodes and the median podcast duration is anywhere between 42 seconds and eight minutes. So, most people wow. aren't delivering long content. Most people aren't delivering consistent content. 42 seconds Yep. to eight minutes is the median episode. Yep. Damn. I think our intro is about 28 seconds. Ooh, ooh, excuse my third grade math uh, lack of knowledge. Right, that is go. the mean. The that mean. is the okay. average. The median is 38 minutes, 42 seconds. So okay. still Got it. Above, yeah. the, above the average. All right. I dig it. So, you know, but we're just trying to be consistent with it, with the podcast, with anything that we do. Um, and that's important to us again, because discipline is our first core value discipline. Um, but it's been really cool. And this started last year, some of these conversations of people reaching out to us and, um, you know, for those of you that are getting started and you see other places having opportunities or relationships developing, you're like, man, I wish that was me. Don't wish it was you. Just do what you need to do each day, and at some point it will be you. You know, and again, be wise enough to decipher also that just 
because it is an opportunity that's been presented to you, it doesn't necessarily make it a great opportunity. All right. Particularly if you are early on in your career, whatever it may be. And all of a sudden somebody's trying to like hang their hat with you, you know, and put why, why tell me about it. I what? just got done of weeks of asking what? that exact question. Yeah. Why? Like why me? Because if, if, you, if someone's trying to bring a ton of value to you, and you know for a fact you can't really add much value to the relationship, you really need to be paying attention to to why, all right? Because there is a reason. Most people don't just run around doing business with people out of the goodness of their heart. I mean, that's just a fact. That's just a fact. So th there's usually a reciprocation there. Now, it's important to add value. You know, like I said, I don't go in asking for anything. You know, we're consistently – if what we're asking for is how can we help, how can we add value, but I'm also not just running up to, to anybody, you know, we want to be a resource, but you got to be wise. You got to, you know, filter these things through, you know, it does this opportunity really fit with what I'm about and what I want to do. And we've said no to a lot of stuff over the years. It's really cool though, the things that we're saying maybe to right now and that we're going through the process and building out and seeing if a new relationship you know, or business opportunity can form. So it, it's pretty cool what comes from consistency. Consistency is hard, but in every facet of your life, consistency pays dues and, you know, you got to stick with it. So pay attention to that. Be disciplined to Jonathan's point. Discipline is the only thing that'll get you to be inconsistent. So if you lack discipline, you will never have consistency. And so if you're constantly wondering, why not me? Why not me? You're probably being more disciplined asking yourself, why not me? rather than being disciplined on your craft, your trade, bettering yourself, whether it's podcasts, reading, audio books, you know, putting yourself in rooms with people that are going to challenge you to, to grow as an individual and as a business, be disciplined in the right ways. All right. It's easy to be disciplined on the cupcakes and ho-hos. We'll holler at you next week. Thanks.